so now we have Walid in the hot seat again. Uh, one of the uh, trauma scenarios. So Walid, are you ready? Yes, I am. So um, you are the orthopedic consultant on call, and uh, you've been pre-notified about um, this gentleman arriving at um, the ED with us. It is 32 year old and um, had a run over injury. Uh, so you attended to the uh, to the resource. Uh, tell me how would you how would you proceed? Uh, so first, I would make sure that uh, the ATLS uh, protocols and guidelines have been uh, applied, including the uh, A, B, uh, C, and D, with uh, special uh, emphasis on the C. Uh, I would make sure he had a pelvic binder properly uh, uh, fitted. Uh, pre-admission and that he has had his uh, tranexamic acid. Um, uh, I would... His, uh, his, his blood pressure, is, is because you've mentioned the APCD, so his blood pressure is actually uh, 90 over 60. Uh, he's been tran transfused two units of um, blood so far. Still the blood pressure is not um, catching up. Yes, yeah, so uh, these patients uh, tend to have a uh, high uh, volume of blood loss, which could reach up to 40%. Two units of uh, transfusion is not enough uh, for these types of injuries. And I would uh, activate the major transfusion protocol. Uh, in our trust, the uh, protocol is two to one to one, meaning four units of blood to two units of uh, FFP and two units of uh, platelets. Uh, I would then, uh, the first unit is, uh, um, um, non-specific, so it's an O negative, and the, sorry, the first pack is, is non-specific O negative, and the second pack would be a specific. Meanwhile, I would liaise with the uh, theater team, make them aware that we have a case of unstable pelvis, and that we might be taking him into theater. Uh, I would also liaise with the radiologist, uh, make them aware of the case, and that we might be needing interventional uh, radiology. I would assess him after the first pack, and if he hasn't responded, I would administer the uh, second pack. I would also uh, again look continuously assess the AMB, look for other injuries such as chest wall injuries, make sure there's no external bleeding uh, as well. Okay, so after he's had the, uh, after he activated the major transfusion protocol and he's had the uh, first pack, the blood pressure started to um, catch up. It's now 110 over um, 60. Uh, however, you're still concerned about the uh, blood loss and stability. So how would you proceed next? Yes, so uh, if he is now stable and the trauma team leader together with the trauma team are happy, I could take him to the uh, CT for a CT uh, angiogram, trauma CT angiogram as per the uh, BOA guidelines. Uh, and I would uh, do a secondary survey. I would also administer a urinary catheter, uh, one try of urinary catheter. So the urinary catheter has been inserted and there's no blood in the catheter and the CT angiogram has been done and show mainly uh, venous uh, bleeding but by the end of the CT then the patient started to drop his blood pressure um, again. Okay um, so yeah so in that case I, I will still uh, make sure I have appropriate blood transfusion going on. I would uh, uh, take the patient to uh, theaters for a uh, pelvic packing procedure. Uh, the other option would be a uh, embolization in II. However, I am aware uh, that 80% of uh, these patients bleed due to venous bleeding rather than arterial bleeding. And I think from um, so, you know, personal experience and, and, and several studies have also shown that taking the patient to the interventional radiology uh, actually takes more time than pelvic packing. Uh, for the pelvic packing procedure, I would have to do it against a stable pelvis, meaning I would either uh, put an external fixator in the iliac bones, or I would leave the pelvic binder on, and I would pack the pelvis through a midline uh, longitudinal incision, uh, then go midline uh, between the two recti and administer f uh, and insert four uh, uh, surgical towels on each side, uh, and uh, then uh, close the fascia once again and um, monitor the patient. So you mentioned in your initial resuscitation the tranexamic acid. Are you aware of any evidence to support the use of tranexamic acid in such injuries? Yes, so the CRASH-2 uh, trial 
uh, which showed that patients who have a tranexamic acid within three hours of injury uh, had a significant uh, a decline in the uh, mortality uh, compared to the ones which did not. Yeah, that's right. So now the patient has the external fixator on and he's a stable. Uh, time's up. Okay. So what do you think you did? I think it, it went fine. Uh, I, in, in terms of uh, uh, the overall management, I followed the ATLS guidelines. I uh, followed the major transfusion uh, protocols. Uh, when he was stable, I took him to the uh, CT. Uh, I, my, I inserted the urinary caster as per uh, the guidelines. And, uh, and then when he started dropping again, I continued to resuscitate him and I took him to theaters. Uh, uh, maybe it, I didn't, uh, there are, were a lot of areas which I didn't get enough time to talk about, including um, the evidence uh, perhaps behind pelvic packing versus uh, angiography, but I don't think there with this type of viva, I will have enough time to uh, mention that. Yeah, I agree. So I think you did really well. The thing is, um, this is a very common exam scenario, and um, what the exam has in the examiner has in mind is actually that you are a safe surgeon. You know how to to stabilize that patient, how to get that patient to theater, and he would be far less concerned about the definitive fixation and the classification of the uh, of the pelvic fractures. So he stabilized the patient when he was stable enough. He had a CT angio, which is the protocol in the most, uh, most hospitals. And then when he started to drop his blood pressure again, the next appropriate step would have been the pelvic backing, uh, as you uh, mentioned. Um, so you're very sensible. You reacted according to the parameters you're getting from the patient's vitals. Uh, yeah, and I think you did really well. Okay, thank you. Um, so these are the, the British Orthopedic Association um, guidelines for the management of the patient with the pelvic um, fractures. Um, you need to uh, familiarize yourself with that. You need to have a read through them and you find that when you more or less follow their protocol, um, they recommend the CT angio when the patient is um, stable and uh, the patients with urethral injury uh, or suspected urethral injuries you just have only one goal uh, with the insertion of uh, the uh, urinary catheter uh, we have also we talked about the crash trial which is a very famous trial in the uk and um, it suggests that the early administration of the tranexamic acid within three hours of the uh, injury um, is very effective in reducing the morbidity and mortality uh, however, much less effective administered uh, after three hours. So it's something that you need to uh, start very early on. Um, so this paper is actually a nice one. You, uh, if you have time, you can read this one. It's, um, it compares and gives a bit of evidence about interventional radiology versus um, embolization in management, uh, interventional radiology versus packing in management of the um, patients uh, who are unstable after um, uh, pelvic fractures. Okay, thank you, Ahmed. Thank you.